Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Virginia Funders Network's third annual meeting. I'm Jill Coleman, Vice President of Program for the Cameron Foundation and Board Chair for VFN. During today's meeting, we'll share progress on our strategic framework, which was launched in January of this year. We will honor two founding board members who are retiring, and we will elect several outstanding colleagues to the advisory board. The strategic framework. So as we move, or as we move on, thank you, Bess. We, um, this is VFN's 2023 um, through 2025 strategic framework. This has guided us throughout the year, and we're making great progress on it. During the process to develop this framework, we revisited and refined it our mission, um, our vision, and our values. They are important reminders of the purpose for Virginia's Funders Network. And now I would like to introduce Beth Littlefield, who became VFN CEO in July of this year. And she would share a few highlights on the work that has taken place this year as we get, began to implement the strategic framework. But Beth, before you um, start to speak, I want to thank everyone for a tremendous year, the staff and board members, executive and advisory, and the members. Um, I think that we had a tremendous year, and I want to thank everyone. And I apologize that I'm on the phone, you know, just when you need um, the Zoom, it, sometimes it doesn't do what you need. So I apologize and uh, that I'm not on the, the Zoom and, and um, had some work emergencies that I had to respond to. So thank you all, and I'll turn it over to Beth now. Thank you very much, Jill. Um, it has been an honor and a privilege to join the VFN team. And I must just take a minute to thank the members of the advisory board who not only selected me to be your next leader, but have also provided a warm welcome from day one. I also wanna recognize my colleagues, Patty Koval, Angie Molina, and Robin Mockenhoff, who have shown me so much support on my learning journey with VFN and are committed to doing their part to ensure VFN's success. I hope you will all join me in thanking them. Jill asked us to share progress on the implementation of VFN's strategic framework. On your screen as a reminder of the five strategies of VFN's plan to carry out our mission. Please note the associated icon for each strategy. You may remember we began using the, this visual representation at this year's conference to show the direct connection of our efforts to the framework. The framework also outlines intended outcomes. As we provide an update throughout the meeting today, these same icons will appear as a reminder of how the strategic framework has guided our work. We should take great pride in our growth in just three short years. VFN is 120 members strong, representing diverse funder types from all regions in the Commonwealth. Member engagement is at the core of the strategic framework strategies. And I am going to ask Paul and Cheatham, chair of VFN's membership committee, to provide just a few highlights. Thank you, Bess. As Bess said, I'm Paul and Cheatham, chair of the VFN membership committee and uh, with Dominion Energy and the Dominion Energy Charitable Foundation. Strengthening regional connections is a critical component to carrying out VFN's mission. Regional gatherings, were held throughout the Commonwealth this year, bringing members and community leaders together to learn from each other and identify ways to work collaboratively to address community needs. While there's great diversity among the Virginia communities, VFN members recognize shared priorities that all the regions in the state must address, quality housing that people can afford, education and workforce training that leads to good paying jobs and opportunity for economic and social mobility along with access to an array of health services. 
Moving on to the second annual conference, VX Bend's second annual conference drew the largest gathering of grant makers and grant making organizations together to date, connecting members with data and best practice models for philanthropic sector to do its part in advancing opportunities for Virginia communities to thrive. At the conclusion of this year's conference, we received an unprecedented amount of feedback that the that the 2024 Conference Planning Committee is using to shape the content and structure for next year's conference, which will be on Richmond, May 6th through 8th. Uh, and I can tell you that's already shaping up to outpace Roanoke. Now I'm going to turn it back over to Bess uh, to share a few highlights from this year's agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Pollen. Um, thanks to the investment from the Richmond Memorial Health Foundation, our one of our founding members, um, and support from the Bob and Anna Lou Sheberg Foundation, VFN published its fourth report highlighting the challenges faced by Virginia's aging population. This report also shared recommendations for how the funding community can help. Many of you may recall the need for bringing funders together around this topic was the result of data shared at the inaugural conference in Williamsburg. VFN also provided a platform this year for members to learn about the impact of the end of the public health emergency on Virginia families and the renewal process for Medicaid recipients to remain eligible for publicly subsidized health insurance. Virginia Housing provided VFN with a $30,000 grant this year to offer a series of learning sessions on strategies to address housing insecurity across the Commonwealth. The first session was held this fall. We will have our second one in January, on January 23rd. And the final session will be in person at the third annual conference in May. We anticipate housing-related learning and convening and shared opportunities will continue to be a major focus for VFN going forward. I'm going to turn um, this over to Clark Castile, CEO of the Danville Regional Foundation and Vice Chair of VFN, to share a few notable outcomes on progress toward our strategic plan. Thanks, Beth. In this first year of VFN's new strategic framework, we've already made progress towards our intended outcomes. Here are just a few examples. Two funding collaboratives were launched in 2023 that brought philanthropic investments to scale. Five of our members joined together to resource a health reporter position at Cardinal News, a nonprofit news organization in Southwest Virginia. And 20 of us invested in the Virginia Mental Health Access Program to deliver training training developed by the Reach Park Institute. This program helps to address the state shortages of pediatric mental health specialists by training primary care providers in mental health care. The Bainham Family Foundation, recognizing that VFN is the go-to resource for institutional philanthropy in Virginia, provided a $50,000 grant to VFN to work collaboratively with the Maryland Philanthropy Network and Philanthropy DMV, the regional philanthropic philanthropic survey organization for Greater DC. This grant will explore an alignment of policy and advocacy efforts where appropriate, where appropriate among the three PSOs and provide VFN with funding to us, assess our statewide work in this area. To demonstrate the power of our members' collective action, please watch this brief video on the impact that the VMAP training program has had on one primary care pediatrician. Dr. Joshua Jacob. I want to briefly tell you about the VMAP REACH training. We are suffering a crisis in youth mental health, and VMAP's REACH training was transformative to my practice and the ability to respond to patient needs. It is the most impressive CME I've ever experienced. The program offers over 28 hours of CME, and whether you're recently out of training or an experienced practitioner, it is guaranteed to offer an expansion of your knowledge. When I finished the program, I gained confidence in diagnosing and treating patients who sometimes waited for specialty care. I learned best practices in mental health support, psychopharmacology, and age-appropriate screening tools. 
Now I'm making an even greater difference in my community. The program includes ongoing clinical case reviews with your peers in pediatric primary care, led by a pediatric provider and psychiatrist. So whether you're a physician, nurse practitioner, or a PA, please join us at a virtual or in-person VMAP REACH training this year. Thanks to state and philanthropic support, you pay no more than $100 registration fee for a program that normally costs more than $2,000. I hope you can join us. I will now turn the program over to Dan Lehman, CEO of the Community Foundation of the Central Blue Ridge and chair of VFM's Governance Committee. Great. Thank you, Clark. Uh, I'm pleased to provide a few updates related to VFN's governance. Uh, PATH Partnerships, which has served as the fiscal sponsor of VFN since our inception, has graciously agreed to continue in that role for another three years as we build towards financial sustainability. We're very grateful to PATH Partnerships and the staff of the PATH, PATH Foundation for this working relationship. We also updated the bylaws of VFN in November. Upon the recommendation of the membership committee, the advisory board voted to add a new partner category of membership. This category is for organizations, businesses, and sole practitioners that serve the philanthropy and nonprofit fields, but are not grant-making institutions, such as think tanks and academic institutions that focus the majority of their work on the philanthropic and nonprofit fields, consultants who provide services in support of grant-making organizations, and professional advisors who provide some services in support of grant making organizations and, and don't apply to apply uh, don't qualify to apply as a member the addition of the partner category which was developed uh, by the membership uh, committee under the leadership of paul and Sheenan, um, should enrich the VF, vfn experience for everyone this change required an update to vfn's bylaws which now also reflects the extension of the PATH Partnerships fiscal sponsorship of VFN. And finally, on behalf of the advisory board and the board of PATH Partnerships, I bring to you three nominations for additions to the VFN advisory board. If confirmed by the membership, each nominee will serve a three-year term beginning in 2024. Our three nominees include Sean McMurray, Executive Director of Wellspring Foundation in Southwest Virginia, Sherry Norquist, Executive Director of Community Engagement and Impact at Centera Healthcare, and Courtney Rice, Chief of Strategy and Impact with Richmond Memorial Health Foundation. So with that recommendation, I turn things back over to you, Jill, uh, to proceed with a membership vote. Um, Jill, Dan, Jill had to excuse herself. She had an uh, uh, emergency. So I'm going to ask you to call for the vote officially as chair of the governance committee. It's an honor to do so. Um, I'm assuming we have a poll ready. We do. Uh, so if uh, whoever's controlling that could put put up the poll. And on behalf of the membership or uh, the uh, governance committee, um, I do um, ask that the membership uh, of VFN that's present with us today to express their uh, votes on these three candidates for membership on the advisory board. Okay, we have um, the voting in and it was a unanimous vote for each candidate. Wonderful. So thank you everyone for voting and confirming these three nominees. All right, Bess, I guess I turn things back over to you in Joel's absence. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dan, very much. Um, as we draw the third annual meeting of the Virginia Funders Network to a close, I'd ask you to join me in sending special thanks to three of our board members. Jill Coleman, um, who will be ending her term as chair this year, uh, she has been a tremendous leader during a year of transition. As chair, she oversaw the launch of VFN's strategic framework and has guided this organization towards sustainability. We are fortunate that Jill will remain on the board uh, as immediate past chair for 2024. Mark Constantine, an inaugural member of the advisory board and dedicated professional, left the Commonwealth this year for a leadership role at the Dogwood Health Trust in North Carolina. A true reflection of Mark's integrity and commitment to VFN, 
he made sure that VFN had the resources and brain power to build a solid foundation for the future. And last but certainly not least, Patricia Matthews, fondly referred to as Pat, who also is an inaugural member of the advisory board. She shared her wisdom and demonstrated her commitment to VFN's vision that all Virginia communities are valued and thriving and are empowered and supported by a strong philanthropic sector. As Pat retires from the VFN Advisory Board and the Northern Virginia Health Foundation, her leadership will sorely be missed. The VFN team is most grateful to each of you and your member organization for your commitment to this work. As we close out and find, as we end this uh, third annual meeting, we all send our appreciation and thanks for joining us this afternoon. We can all be very proud of the work that has taken place to launch this organization. As VFN ends our first three years as the statewide membership association for grant makers in Virginia, we will build upon the solid beginnings. We will do so by leaning in to our strategic framework. We will launch a new member engagement structure to give all members multiple ways to deepen their involvement. We will test new and innovative philanthropic ideas to demonstrate to the public sector where its investment will have the greatest returns. We will bring Virginia to the attention of national funders to inspire new large scale investments. And we will provide a forum for collaborative learning and collaborative action to amplify the impact of philanthropy on Virginia's communities. We stand adjourned.